So I think a lot of you getting into online poker assume that if you learn just one trick or skill, then that's going to be it, man. Meaning now you finally figured this game out and can make millions of dollars on the virtual felt. But the reality is that it's a stack of skills that you need to get good at. And it's usually over a long time frame because it takes time to get good at each one. You know, for me personally, I've been playing online now for over 15 years and I've developed my game in a way that's allowed me to make money consistently by using these skills I'm going to share with you today. Of course, as I'm getting to them, I will be breaking down another session here on Bovada Poker. You know, this is currently one of the main sites I like to play on because the games are fairly easy to beat at the mid stakes, which you're going to see here. Uh, if you guys are looking for a solid site to get started with, this would be one of my top recommendations. So there will be some bonus and resource links you can check out directly below in the description. You could also get on our premium poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get into these tips. Okay, tip number one, and hear me out on this, is that you need to start playing the actual player and not sitting back just waiting for premium hands. You know, I see this kind of thing all the time, but you need to stop doing this because you become very predictable. And I'll just give you an example. Like, um, Okay, this is a shorthanded game. If you notice somebody's just folding everything, you know, over and over again, and finally they open up with a hand, it's likely they have a premium hand, okay? So they're very predictable, and you don't want to put yourself into being a predictable player. It's just not how you want to do this. And uh, my second tip is... Um, which is just really stop being so predictable. You really need to mix up your play. You got to throw bluffs in the mix. I mentioned this in a previous video, but I recommend bluffing about 10 to 20% of the actual hands you play and see flops with, which is a good starting point, especially if you're not bluffing at all. You know, it takes time to get good at bluffing, but once you do, it really opens up your game a lot. It also helps you take down more pots consistently, which is going to help you make more money consistently. Now, this hand was a great river card for us. You can see I went for a value bet, and this guy just could not give up the hand. Um, so we took down a nice one right there. It would have been pretty sick if you had a hand like uh, Jack King there, but whatever. Uh, you know, I put a nice value bet in, and we took it down. Um, all right, third tip here is that you just need to be aggressive, especially as you move up in stakes. Um, being aggressive uh, doesn't mean you have to get reckless, but when you have good hands or you know, you're know you in a situation where you think your opponent probably missed the flop too because a bunch of bad cards came out, you need to stay aggressive with your hand, especially to protect it. So you know, I would say 95% of the time, be aggressive. You could obviously mix things up a little bit and every once in a while limp with the big hand, um, but you're going to see in this hand... Uh, that I had, didn't really have a good flop at all. Turn card wasn't good either. But even though this was not exactly a hand that I wanted or that you would think about betting into, I still went for it here on the river um, and put a bet in. He did make the call, so we did lose his hand. But I still like the fact that I was being aggressive. And at least I went for it. Instead of just checking and obviously probably just losing, I still like the play here, um, even though we just had a pair. And obviously there's an ace out there, a lot of flush I mean, he could have any kind of flush, but I was still aggressive and bet it, even though we didn't win. Um, four tip would be that you need to be three betting. Now, three betting is something that also takes time to get good at. It's sort of like bluffing, but um, three betting is usually very effective when you're playing in cash games and somebody's raising you in late position. Now, if you're in one of the blinds, whether it's the small or big blind, three betting is a way to protect your blinds. And also, worst case scenario, somebody calls you uh, with the hand that you three bet, like a jack eight suited or a jack seven suited or like a queen five suited, you know, those hands can still hit on the flop. Plus, you're putting your opponents in tough positions when you're three betting them and they're raising you in late position. Keyword here is when they're raising you in late position because you got to understand that, you know, your opponents aren't going to have really good hands when they're doing that. They're just trying to steal the blinds. And the more you realize what's going on in these hands, um, you know, the better you're going to get. Um, and really, my last tip is another big one for you guys. Uh, you want to quit for the day if you take a loss and it just affects you emotionally to the point of not being able to play good poker or just focus. You got to remember, you know, poker, whether it's live or online, this is a long term thing. It's going to be here tomorrow and the day after that. So when you have that mindset, it's not going to affect you as much when you take those bad beats or just those beats, um, you know. All right. Anyways, I went for uh, 
obviously, I mean, we've got the biscuits here. Uh, I went for another value bet here. We got paid off and we kind of back up a little bit here, back up like 40 to 60 bucks. Uh, but continue sticking around guys, because we did get, uh, I want to say definitely like over 400 bucks in this. So we had a, a nice winning session, but you could see that the way I was playing in this session, I was, I was very unpredictable. Just I, the way I was playing, you know, I got players to make calls on me thinking I was bluffing. And um, the reason that worked was working for me was because the opponents at this table just didn't know if I had it or I was bluffing because I just mix up my plays so much in these sessions. I'm always playing different. And, you know, that's one of the keys, guys. But you got to remember you're playing against other players. These are other human beings you're playing against. You got to remember that. So you want to try to outplay them. And also just be thinking about what they might be holding. All right. Anyways, uh, next hand, uh, not a bad flop for us. Obviously, you know, hitting a nine on the turn would be good. We're still looking for some low cards, um, you know, but that nine on the turn. Now I'm definitely feeling good here because he's probably got like an ace high, maybe like a king high, uh, but definitely not putting him on a seven or four here. So our, our hand's looking pretty good. If we hit that nine on the river, it would be pretty sick. Now he made the call on us which was surprising after you see what his hand was, but didn't like seeing the king. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm still feeling pretty good here. So, you know, I just kind of let it check. We took it down because I didn't like that king. Now, if there was like a deuce on the river or something like that, yeah, then I would have been like, okay, let's uh, continue betting here. Because I figured, or at least I thought that he was going to have like a like an ace or a king type of hand right there, but he didn't. So a little bit surprised by that, but it is what it is. All right, this hand was complete luck. Now we're sitting in the big blind with a six nine suited. You know, obviously, if you're getting raised, then um, I would just make a call here. You don't necessarily need a three bet a hand like this, but protecting your big blind against a raise here definitely makes a lot of sense to me. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> we hit the boat here with the the six nine looking so disguised too now there's a couple flush draws out there as well uh the the deuce on the river was a beautiful card for us so if this guy's got honestly an ace you know i mean if it was me i'm definitely not folding here i'm gonna make the call now i try to put in the correct sizing which is always tricky but he had nothing anyway so he was never making that call so you know didn't make really anything on that one but you know, we still took it down. I thought it was a pretty uh, interesting spot. All right, pocket fives. So actually seen a lot of pocket pairs in this session. And this was a shorter session. I only played for about 45 minutes. So you're just seeing some of these hands condensed down. But yeah, what do we have? Uh, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket fives. We're going to have pocket sevens here in a second. And also pocket threes, which is actually going to be the hand that made us in this one. Pocket threes lately have been pretty good for me. Um, pocket threes and pocket fours, I've been hitting sets with a lot lately, which is always nice. Okay, not uh, the greatest flop, um, but we could still be ahead here. Turn card, I put a queen out there. I just decided to give this up because, you know, I figured he probably had a pair here, so, you know third pair why even give it to him i just folded it and i let's see what the river card was yeah it would have been an eight so yeah uh definitely i think folding there made a lot of sense all right pocket sevens now we did win this one i was kind of surprised by it honestly um just i think the board was kind of bad for this so we didn't really get what we needed but Hope you guys are still with me because, like I said, you definitely want to see the all-in situation where we're going to get this double up pretty soon. Um, and, yeah, if you have any uh, – you want to comment below, anything like that, feel free to do that. I always respond to people. It takes me a little bit of time, but here to help you guys out for sure. And here we go. Yeah, I man, I'll tell you what, a lot of pocket pairs in this. All right, so three, three, four, you know, hitting that that seven on the turn would be very nice here. Um, didn't like to see the ace, right? Uh, also, now you, you've got some flush draws out there, but, 
you know, pocket sevens, if he bets here, I'm kind of in a spot where, what do I do? River card wasn't good either. So we went from having a pretty good flop to having a couple terrible turn in river cards, but we still won. So he didn't have anything. That one worked out for us. And, uh, you know, on to the next one. Okay, so pocket threes, and the nice thing about this hand was I really didn't need to do anything. I just let my opponent bet into it, which is always nice, guys, when, uh, you know, that happens for you. <clears throat> Doesn't always happen this way, but in this one, um, we got some guy really overplaying his top pair, hitting that three on the flop, just feeling real spicy. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yes, let's do that. And uh, another tip for you guys, when you're playing online poker, really – the best time to play in my opinion and what i've seen as far as like profitability late at night late at night is where you get a lot of people who've been playing too long uh they're starting to play bad poker they're overplaying their hands or they're, they're just kind of burnt out for the day during the day i feel like people are a lot more sharp on their game but when you play late at night you're going to see people just you know who have just been playing too long they're starting to play bad poker starting to make bad plays and that's really what you can capitalize on and the other thing about playing online poker, it's not that you just have to grind it out all the time for so many hours. It's just about playing good poker. Obviously, situations going your way, hands holding up. But, um, you know, over time, when you put all these things together, because like I said, this is just like a stack of skills you need to keep getting better at over time. Um, put in the work, getting better, rewatching sessions, all these things, they really start to add up over time. And that's really what you're looking for. It's just like anything in life. It's just how bad do you want it? Do you want to get good at this skill? Do you want to excel at it? And, you know, do you want it to be something that can help you, you know, make a little bit of money at the same time? Okay, anyways, uh, now turn card did put a flush out there, but still we're ahead of a lot of hands. Um, uh, there was a point, though, in this hand where I thought that, like, maybe our hand what not good uh, and we were up against another set. It did feel like that for a second, but it's not like, you know, even though we've got bottom set to this board, you know, I'm, you're never getting away from this hand. If you're going to get stacked by somebody, you're going to get stacked, but you know, I'm just never getting away. Anyways, he's going to put in a raise. I just felt like what else are we going to do here except come over the top? We are, he called me kind of so quick that I thought to myself like, oh man, does he have a set? Like it almost felt like that for a second. Um, you know, and I slowed this hand down for you guys so you could see it, but, uh, yeah, he called us so quick and I was very happy to see what he had because, you know, uh, basically drawing, no, not basically drawing dead. He was drawing dead. So he really overplayed that hand. And that guy, you know, thank you for the donation. We'll take it. And uh, it is what it is. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed another session here. I thought we had some good stuff. Um, you know, like I said, get on that newsletter. We'll have some great resources below for you. You know, if you made it to the end, tap that like. Thanks for watching this, guys. And we'll see you all in the next poker video.